Hi, kiddos. Welcome back from fall break. I'm so happy to see you. Um, so uh, continuing from our growth mindset ideas, the first week we talked about what? Mistakes. Good. Mistake. You, you remember. Good, 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 good. Okay. So we learn from our mistakes, right? Because it helps keep us, um, it helps us grow and learn. Good job. What's the second idea? Good. The second idea is being persistent. Okay. So now we kind of want to wrap it up, okay, with challenges, okay? So like what Miss Lori told you in, um, you know, like before, um, our brain is like a muscle, right? So if you want to train it, you need to be what? Willing to make mistakes because mistakes helps us learn. Um, we have to be persistent and be able to take on challenges because just like sports, right? If I'm training my muscle and if I'm doing uh, five um, push-ups right now, and if I want my muscle to grow, I'm going to do 10 tomorrow and um, be persistent about it. And then, you know, maybe do 15. And then my, so that means like my muscle is going to grow stronger, right? So today through the story of Emmanuel, let's see how he's taking challenges, how he is being persistent about it, okay? Emmanuel's dream. Here we go. Okay. In Ghana, West Africa, a baby boy was born. Two bright eyes blinked in the light. Two healthy lungs let out a powerful cry. Two tiny fists open and closed, but only one strong leg kicked. Most people thought he would be useless or worse, a curse. His father left never to return, but his mother had faith. Her name was Comfort. As she named her first child Emmanuel, meaning God is with us. As Emmanuel grew, Mama Comfort told him he could have anything, but he would have to get it for himself. He learned to crawl and hop, to fetch water and climb coconut trees. He even shined shoes to earn money. Most kids with disabilities couldn't go to school. Still, Emmanuel's mother carried him there until one day she said, you are too heavy. From then on, Emmanuel hopped to school and back, two miles each way on one leg by himself. At first, nobody would play with him. So Emmanuel saved his money and bought something none of his classmates had, a brand new soccer ball. Of course, he would share it if he could play too. Lounging and spinning on crutches, his grandmother had found for him and kicking the ball with his good left foot. Emmanuel earned their respect. His new friends sometimes used their lunch money to rent bikes. Would Emmanuel be able to join them? His friend Godwin pushed him fast so he could balance. Over and over again, Emmanuel fell hard. But finally, okay, so what is Emmanuel doing right now that's showing persistent? Yes, good. Okay, yes, because what did he do? He fell over and over again, right? But guess what? He was able to, he rode. So he was able to ride the bike. When Emmanuel was 13, Mama Comfort got very sick. She could no longer sell vegetables at the market. And Emmanuel's sister and brother were too little to work. He could have, to, uh, he would have to support them. Against his mother's wishes, Emmanuel snuck out and boarded a midnight train to the bustling city of uh, uh, Accra, 
150 miles away, alone. He didn't know it then, but it would be two years before he saw his family again. Emmanuel arrived full of hope. There were so many people, but no one would hire him. Shopkeepers and restaurant owners told him to go out and beg like other disabled people did. Emmanuel refused. Finally, a food stand owner offered him a job and a place to live. When Emmanuel wasn't serving drinks, he kept busy shining shoes. He earned money and sent it home. One morning when Emmanuel went to buy shoe shining supplies, the shopkeeper thought he uh, was there to beg and scolded him, insulted. Emmanuel slammed his money down on the counter. The, shoe, uh, the shopkeeper apologized, but Emmanuel would never forget. When Mama Comfort grew sicker, Emmanuel went home to be with her. From her bed on Christmas Eve, she told her son, be respectful, take care of your family, don't ever beg, and don't give up. By the next morning, Emmanuel's beloved mother was dead. He was heartbroken, but he knew her last words had been a gift. He would honor them by showing everyone that being disabled does not mean being unable. It was a big dream, but Emmanuel had a plan. Emmanuel had a sharp mind, a bold heart, and one strong leg. All he needed was a bike. At first, no one would help. They thought his plan to bicycle around Ghana was impossible. Then Emmanuel wrote to the, cha uh, the Challenged Athletes Foundation all the way in San Diego, California. They sent him a bike, plus a helmet, shorts, socks, and gloves. Okay, I'm going to pause right here. So let's rethink what was Emmanuel's first um, challenge, right? Good. Okay, so he only had one leg, right? He was born with one leg. And his first challenge was what? He was hopping to school for two miles, correct? Mm hmm Okay. And then what was his second challenge? Riding a bike with one leg. Very good, kiddos. Good eye. Good, good, good. Okay. So now what is what is his third challenge now? Nobody agreed with his planned plan, right? What he planned for. But what did he do? Yes. He wrote to the Challenge Athlete Foundation. Right? And guess what? He made it, he made his dream come true. Very good. All right, Emmanuel started training for his long ride. He persuaded the king of his region to give him a royal blessing. He went door to door asking for additional support. Finally, he hired a taxi to follow him with drinking water, a camera, and his best friends. Then Emmanuel tied his right leg to the bike's frame jammed his right foot into a flip-flop attached to the pedal and rode. Emmanuel pedaled through the bustling city of uh, Ar Arkra. He pedaled through rainforests, over rolling hills, and across wide, muddy rivers. He pedaled past autumn forest and uh, plantain farms and through the market city of uh, Kumasi. He pedaled as truck roared past the narrow highways and wild animals stalked his thoughts. He pedaled through vast grasslands and into the ancient city of Tamale. He rode up, down, across, and around his country, proudly wearing the colors of its flag on a shirt printed with the words 
the pozo, or the disabled person. Along the way, Emmanuel talked to those with physical challenges and those without, to poor farm workers and wealthy landowners, to religious uh, leaders, government officials, and reporters. He wanted everyone to see him and his disability. He wanted everyone to hear him and his message. The farther Emmanuel rode, the more attention he got. Children cheered. Able-bodied adults ran or rode along with him. People with disabilities left their homes and come outside and came outside. Some of the very for, some for the very first time. The young man once thought of as cursed was becoming a national hero. He completed his astonishing journey, pedaling south to the sea and back up to Accra, nearly 400 miles in just 10 days. But Emmanuel's success goes even further than that. He proved that one leg is enough to do great things, and one person is enough to change the world. Do you see the uh, similarity with what he thinks and what um, Malala, her quote, what, her, what she thought? Yes. Yeah. One person can change the world. Correct? Very good. Okay. And then this is his favorite, um, his um, actual famous quote. He said, in this world, we are not perfect. We can only do our best. All right, kiddos. So to wrap that up, when we are facing challenges, what do we do? We do our best. Very good. All right. So I hope you like that story and I hope you enjoyed it. That's a wrap for our growth mindset um, um, theory. So I hope to see you next week. Okay. Bye, kiddos.